Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today we've got a project for the dog. Um, we have a beautiful girl boxer and it's the first time she's going on in heat. So I've never had female dogs before. I've only ever had males, so it's a new experience for me. She's very, very clingy at the moment. Um, so we're going to make her some sanitary pants so that she doesn't make a mess inside the house. I'm only going to use them inside. Uh, but they're a really really quick little project to do they don't take long at all um, and all you need to do is insert a sanitary pad inside the pants so stick around we're going to make some pants for Coco so the first thing we need is a template um, rather than going to the trouble of measuring Coco around the waist and the legs I've just gone and grabbed a pair of old knickers so these are just a pair of old knickers and I'm going to use those as my template to make the pants. The other thing I've got is some fabric. This, it doesn't matter what sort of fabric you use. You can use, um, this is polar fleece. So this is my first try with the polar fleece. This is a sateen. This is actually a remnant from one of my rock and roll dresses. So I'm thinking I might actually make a little frilly skirt to attach to this later on just for a bit of fun. But anyway, I'm using a sateen for um, these pants, but you can use any kind of fabric at all. And all I've got is about 60 centimetres. So all we need to do with fabric, I'm going to make these lined pants, that way I can hide all the seams. Um, where I do the tail cut out, I can cut that out and then I can um, fold the hem under and have it nice and tidy around there rather than having raw edges. So I'm doubling this fabric 60 centimetres and I'm just bringing it together at the salvages like that and then all I'm doing is folding that in half. So we're going to work on a half a pattern. Now to make my pattern all I'm doing is taking my knickers folding them in half so that the back of the pants are what's showing because that's the pattern that I'm going to use. The front has the um, legs cut in a little bit, I don't want that. So all I'm doing is folding these in half and that fold is getting placed on the fold of my fabric here. Now you'll see, you can see that there's a little bit of extra fabric here. This is because I actually want to create an overlap for the Velcro straps. So all I want to do now is cut this across here. You can use scissors or your rotary cutter, whichever you prefer. And it's just a rough cut following the guide of my old pants. And I'm going to leave this excess here because on the uh, on the underside, on the belly side of the pants, I actually want the um, pants to come around to the back. And on this side, I actually want to trim that back. So I'm just going to keep going and cutting around here. Open out your fabric. And this is your pattern okay so what we can do is we can take away one piece just set that one aside and that'll be the back the underbelly of our pants and then we need to trim this down so this is about 21 inches across each dog is going to be different and all of our pairs of knickers are going to be different as well so what I'm going to do is trim off about five inches from each side. I've already made a little nick. So fold this back in half and from the raw edge we're going to take off about five inches. And just put a mark there. And then we'll just trim that straight off. So the front of our pants are going, 
the sorry the tail end of our pants is going to look like this and when we put this over the top here we'll have a little cut out here for the tail and then this will come over the top with some velcro and hold the pants in place Once we have our front and back pieces cut out, two of each, what we want to do is put them together at the crutch. So all we want to do is just pin that together and stitch it straight across on the seam there. I'm just going to go and do that right now. And I'll repeat for the back part, for the other piece, the lining. We'll grab both pieces together and make sure it's a crutch that you're lining up. that's it. Now that we've got the front and back attached what we want to do is lay the right sides together line it all up nicely we're going to pin all the way around and we're going to leave an opening uh, where am I going to leave my opening? I think I'm going to leave my opening just on the side. So where the um, back comes across, I'm just going to leave one opening on the side there. It really doesn't matter where you leave your opening as long as you leave one so that you can actually turn your fabric through. So we'll go and pin or clip this together. We'll do this all the way around except for maybe here line up the crutch area here and just finger press the seam open okay we don't want to have too much bulk in there so if we finger press the seam open on both sides and just line up that seam. Okay, so this has been clipped all the way around. I've left an opening here so that I can turn everything through later. So I'm going to start just here, back stitch, come all the way around, stitch all the way down and around, back around here, up to the other side here. And I'll just leave this open. So this is my opening here. And I'm just going to start probably about an inch from the top or from this edge and I'll do a back stitch and continue to sew. Now the seam guide that I'm using is just the edge of my foot here so I'm not using any of the measurements. Um, this is, doesn't need to be perfectly fitted so I'm just using the edge of my foot. Turn your work around and keep on going. Thank you. 
So I've come back to the other side and all I want to do is just back stitch and leave a few inches open there. Before we turn this through, what we want to do is clip the edges. So anywhere you've got curved edges on garments, um, even if it's just a dog outfit, you want to clip the edges so that you've got a nice neat seam underneath when you when you turn everything through. So all we need to do is just get some clippers or scissors, clip it down almost to the stitching line but not quite. So you can see that opens it up a little bit there and it just makes it easier to turn your work through and have it sit nice and flat. Otherwise you'll have it bunching up on the outside. So anywhere there are curved edges you'll want to do that and the corners you'll want to trim so we want to be able to trim that down to the corner not quite to the stitching line and this will actually just give us nicer points when we turn the work through. Okay now that that's done find our opening and we can turn this through. Poke your corners out and where necessary you can just use a pin to help coax the corners out a little bit more. You can go and give this a press if you like, but I'm actually just going to take it to the machine and top stitch it. So where your opening is here, using the seam, the existing seam as a guide, just fold the fabric underneath and clip or pin it in place. So the entire pants are turned through. We're just going to go and top stitch all the way around and I'll start over here. Now because I'm top stitching I want my seams width to be a little bit narrower than normal. So where I usually use the edge of my foot as my stitching guide, I'm not sure if you can see that, so the edge of the foot here, I'm actually going to use the inside edge of my foot so I just look for little guides on my machine anywhere there or on my feet and I'm just going to use that little marker there and use and line up my fabric just along the inside there and that'll give me a nice about a 1 8 inch seam guide. So back stitch when you start and just keep on going and just be careful to follow that guide. Of course you can do a narrower top stitch. Um, on clothing I do like to do it a little bit narrower. Coming up to the end and we'll just back stitch. So there we go, the puppy pants are almost complete. All we need to do now is cut a hole for the tail and put some Velcro on. Now to make the circle for the puppy for the dog's tail, fold the fabric in half. Now we've got the, this will be the top of the dog, that's, so that's a short end and the long end. So taking the short side, 
just fold that in half and make a mark for the centre point. Okay, so that's my centre point just here. It's a white pen, it'll show up eventually. Okay, and we, what we want to do is just mark down three inches. And just put a mark there. So this is where I'm going to start my cutout for the circle. I've got myself a glass. This one's almost three inches in diameter and that'll be big enough for the dog's tail. So all I'm going to do is put the glass over the top of that and centre that over the pants, the back of the pants and draw a ring around it. We'll use a pen so that you can see it better. Okay, so this is the circle for the dog's tail. And I'll just pin that, just so the fabric doesn't shift. And I'll cut that out. So just cut up to the circle, not beyond it. So there's the hole for the dog's tail. What we want to do now is just clip the edges so that it's easier to turn through. And we just want to make some small nicks. They don't need to be too big at all. So just some small nicks which will help this turn through. Because all we want to do is just fold the edges over so that we can actually top stitch around the tail. So once we've done that, what we want to do is fold the edges in. So I just want to fold the edges in here and we'll do the same for the other side and then we're going to meet it up and then stitch all the way around. So I've done that for one side and we'll turn around and do the same for the other side. Okay, so what I've got now is I've got two circles that have been clipped down or pinned down and I want to be able to join those together because we obviously don't want to have a great big gaping hole or an opening there. So all I'm going to do now that those are in the right spot or the right fold is I'll take one of the clips out and the back one or the front one I'll just put in place. So that's now securing the two layers together. And I'm going to go around and do that all the way around the hole. Okay, so we've got this secured nicely on both sides all the way around. We can take these pins out and then we can just take this to the machine and do a top stitch all the way around. So all we're doing now is stitching all the way around the circle and we're using a really close top stitch. You just want to make sure that you catch the fabric on both sides. It helps to stop with your needle in the down position as well because that means that you can actually pivot your work. So I'm lucky my foot actually comes up each time on this machine. But importantly, my needle stays down. And then each time my foot lifts, I can turn a little bit more. You 
if my fabric shifts I'll just get the tweezers and help push the fabric back in the right spot. Okay, so we've got a nice hole there for the dog's tail. It may be a little bit big. You can always go for a smaller hole and um, you can, there's nothing wrong with making it bigger if you find it's too small. But um, it'll be dependent on your dog as well. So we've got the back, the underside of the pants and the back side of the pants. And all that's left to do now is put some Velcro on. Now, these pants are on the short side about 10 inches across. So I want a piece of Velcro just a little bit shorter. So I've cut mine at 9 inches and I'm using the soft side of the Velcro on the pants here. So I'm just bringing that down by about an inch from the top and I'll pin that in place and just centre that evenly over the pants. So this piece of Velcro is going to be stitched all the way around. Now for the other side, we actually want to make sure that we don't put the Velcro on the same side as this because it's not going to work. So what we need to do is turn this around and just double check that when we fold the pants over that this flap will sit over the top like that. So you can see straight away that we want the, the other pieces of Velcro on the inside. So the pants, the, the top part sits there and this will go on the opposite side. So we'll take the same size Velcro and we'll just cut that in half. Measure an inch down from the top. and pin it in place. Okay, so this will fold over nicely and it'll be adjustable for the different size or the different age of your dog as well. So we'll take this to the machine and we'll stitch that Velcro down. So all we need to do here is stitch the Velcro down So the pants are completely finished for Coco and all I need to do now if we're making these as sanitary pads with uh, pants which is what I'm doing is to actually put one in. Um, so all we need to do is take off the plastic and we want to position this as close to the tail area as we can. So if we just position this straight down here and that's it, that'll stay in place there and that will now go over Coco. So let's see if we can try her on. So to put these on, all you need to do is put a tail between in the hole, pull the pants up, so we want the low part, the smallest part in the back. Pull the pants up under her tail, bring the pants around and reposition the Velcro straps. So, how's that? <laughs> are they cute? I reckon they are. Come on, turn around and show, show everybody how you look. There we go. So we've got some nice protection now for the dog. and. I've gone and been a little bit silly because we do the rock and roll and she's got to have herself a little rock and roll skirt. So I've gone and made one for her just to embarrass her a little bit more. So let's put this on. Good girl. Let's see. Okay. Let's have a look. <laughs> hey, you're beautiful, aren't you? Yes, you are. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> you ain't no 
nothing but a hound dog. Crying all the time. Alright, so my singing leaves a lot to be desired. But she looks kind of cute. But anyway, aside from the little skirt, the pants work well. She probably doesn't like them. May not keep them on for long, but we'll see how it goes. So this will do the job um, and it'll protect the furniture at home. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's anything else you'd like to me to make for you, just let me know. Put a comment in the um, a message down in the comments below and hit subscribe and then you won't miss out on any of my other antics. Catch you next time.